Former FTX CEO Sam Bankman Fried facing a litany of charges from the Department of Justice, SEC, and CFTC as he sits in a reportedly maggot infested jail in the Bahamas. Here to break down the law is former federal prosecutor Renato Mariotti, who is currently a partner at law firm Brian Cave Layton Paisner. Renato, thank you so much for joining us. So, did you get a chance to read the indictment? Maybe you could parse that out for us and how the DOJ and all these regulators will work together to bring SBF to justice. For sure. I, I did take a look at the indictment very closely. Uh, a couple of things really stood out to me. One is the sheer breadth of the charges that have been levied against SBF. Uh, he is charged with everything from uh, wire fraud and securities fraud, to conspiracy to commit campaign finance violations, to conspiracy to commit money laundering. They really threw the book at him. That's on top of, of course, the SEC and CFTC parallel civil charges that were brought on exactly the same time. The other thing that really stands out to me is just how quickly these charges were brought. Uh, I uh, spent years when I was a federal prosecutor investigating complex international cases in the financial markets. Uh, those cases usually took years to bring. Uh, I've had the same experience uh, on the other side of things now that I'm in the private sector. Uh, I've never seen a case that was brought so quickly. And Why so do you think it, it really... was so quickly brought on? Is it because of his media tour? Could that have sparked this uh, rapid movement among uh, DOJ and other regulators? They have not we don't know for sure. For or against him. <laughs> Yeah, I, I certainly think it worked against him. And I, I we don't know for sure, but I do think it may have contributed. I, you know, I think that from the DOJ's perspective, SBF was spreading misinformation and was creating a lack of confidence in, in the regulators to police the market. There was a lot of speculation that regulators were going to let him off, that, you know, because of political influence he had, that he wouldn't be prosecuted. And I think they really wanted to send a message. Uh, I will say I've never seen this many people uh, thrown at one uh, in, you know, individual investigation as well. It was remarkable to hear the names of so many people uh, who you know, were thanked as having and being involved in this project. Uh, some of those people I have worked on investigations with, just with them solo, one or two of the people on, on the list that were thanked at the press conference. So very uh, major effort by the United States government to send a message to our industry. I, and do you think that this is part of it, uh, you know, when you said send the message, I mean, is there a broader, uh, is, is there a broader issue at, at stake here for, for the government? In other words, you, you know, that makes Sam Bankman fried represent this sort of, um, you know, uh, have fun staying poor is that, you know, that, that phrase that kept being uh, uttered on social media and stuff by the, the crypto, crypto bro bros. Culture. The, right, the crypto bro culture. And this idea that, um, you know, it, it, it basically swindled money out of uh, unsuspecting investors who were watching the Super Bowl and were swayed by, you know, the, I don't know, the Matt Damons of the world, even though he was advertising a different product. But uh, nonetheless, it's sort of like we got to get these guys in a big way and fast. Is, is that going through the mind of everyone or is it just sort of like, well, this is an easy case. Let's go at it. Oh, I think it's there's definitely an element of the former. Uh, there is definitely an energy in federal law enforcement right now uh, going after crypto. Uh, and I think we've really seen it since Gary Gensler has taken over chair, the chair uh, position at the SEC. I mean, remember when Kim Kardashian had an SEC settlement? Uh, Gary Gensler released social media videos featuring himself on Instagram and Twitter and elsewhere. I mean, you don't put yourself in a video uh, talking about how you're going after crypto unless it's something very personal to you. I, I think that they, the, the administration uh, believes that um, the you know digital asset space is uh, you know unregulated and thinks that uh, they can get away with anything and they are eager to plant a flag and send a message. Did did Sam Bankman Fried ultimately destroy the way uh, the the or at least um, sour the way regulators will approach crypto going forward? Has it has it changed the culture from okay let's regulate it calmly and and think about it to 
this is just bad news. Let's, you know, I, this is on par with, uh, let's throw I don't know. At them. Yeah. But also too, let's, let, let's really scrutinize this thing and make, make it almost impossible for any crypto company to survive. I think he's definitely in the short run soured the United States government's view towards this industry. So I don't expect any sort of industry friendly regulation. Uh, law Lawmakers are not going to be passing these uh, bills that were going through Congress that the industry wanted that we're going to have the CFTC uh, you know, solely in charge of regulating uh, the crypto space. I don't see that happening. And I think you're going to see in the short run a lot of enforcement actions, particularly for the SEC, who I think is going to take a larger role than they have in the past. So, uh, you know, I, I think that anyone who is taking on excessive regulatory risk in the space has to be very careful in the short run. Uh, in the long run, that you know, that, that may change and that, that's going to potentially, uh, you know, come to a better place. But I think in the short run, we're going to see a very different regulatory approach than we have in the past. But the argument for that has always been that if you clamp down on U.S. innovation and the crypto industry, they're just going to go offshore. And that was the case with FTX. That's exactly what they did. They set up in Hong Kong, in the Bahamas, and they and a lot of them are crypto lenders, Nexo, we also leaving the United States right now. And so how do you get at them now that they're offshore companies? Really good point. And, and by the way, you know, there were some lawmakers yesterday, I heard Senator Tester saying we could just ban crypto. And of course, that's absurd, right? I mean, the United States uh, is only one nation in the world, right? But nonetheless, I think another uh, counterpoint is that uh, SBF uh, thought that he was uh, getting himself out from under U.S. regulation by headquartering himself in the Bahamas. And uh, I think one thing he's learned is even if SBF U.S. didn't exist, he still would be in a Bahamian prison right now. And that's because whether you uh, defraud people using baseball cards, tulip bulbs or anything, uh, anything else, uh, you are within the reach of the United States government if you are defrauding people in the United States. And so uh, I do think that um, there is, I think, a little bit of over um, uh, overconfidence that some people have that because yeah. they're, uh, let's say, uh, incorporated in a, a particular jurisdiction that they've escaped all U.S. regulation. I don't think that that's going to uh, be the case for a lot of those people. Renata, how will the Bahamian law work with the U.S. charges and extradition request, in your view? Will there be some conflict in uh, how to handle Sam there? Great question. So I, I, when I was a federal prosecutor, I worked cross border with other countries, not the Bahamian government, but let's say the UK and Australia and others. And in those circumstances, we had uh, a lot of discussions before charges were brought. And I, I really expect that's what happened here, that there was cooperation between the two governments. Uh, I don't think that the Justice Department would have brought charges if they weren't confident that uh, SBF would be extradited to the United States. And what I expect is that there's information sharing between the two governments, but ultimately that the Bahamian government lets the United States take the lead here simply because of the resources that the United States government has. As I mentioned a moment ago, literally dozens and dozens of people working on this case. Uh, you know, the Bahamian government, I think, uh, will, will be satisfied letting the United States take the lead on that front. All right. We got to wrap up there, Renato. But quickly, do you have a figure in your head, a number of how many years Sam faces in jail? Decades. I would say 20 years is uh, a reasonable floor for him.